So, one word to describe this project. What project? <laughs> what you've been doing this afternoon. Oh dear. Painting and joke drawing. And uh, how, how did you like it? I'm hopeless. Hopeless. By oh, doing this, yes. Good. Yeah. Good. Enjoyed oh, the handicraft. Good. Would that work? Yeah. Yeah. How about one word to describe what you've been doing this afternoon? It'd be very hard to describe what I've been doing this afternoon. <laughs> very little of it. Did Some, you enjoy it? Oh yes, I enjoy I always enjoy it. But it's what comes out of the other end is often not what I intended. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes a bit like life, huh? Well, that's right. <laughs> well, I think I mean that's good. Mm -hmm. if things come out the other and you're not quite not what you quite intended. No, then right. you've gone on a good journey. <laughs> The idea of the project was born out of a talk that Professor Paul Kamek from uh, Christ Church Canterbury University gave um, a few years ago, um, where he was talking about the importance and value that uh, material things, uh, the, the stuff, objects, um, everything that's around us have in our lives and how we interact with these materials and, um, and how they can affect the way we feel. From that, being in a museum, Bexhill Museum, is a house full of objects and things and stuff, so it seemed an ideal place to use as a, a starting point to investigate this subject between the objects and, and us. I'm trying to draw that. Mm. <laughs> How's it going? Not very well. <laughs> oh, I think I should have made it bigger. Mm. Start again. Mm. Start again? Yeah, yeah. make it bigger. Why not? What did you think about this project? Interesting. Mum's mm. enjoyed it, so that's good. Can't believe she's drawing it. Taking her out of her comfort that's zone. Mm. She's good. Yes. Normally she's more interested in everyone and everything, not just doing stuff, so that's good. Mm. Self-contained. Mm. Fantastic. I love them to see a different side of her. Yeah, yeah. The old side. Was she already artistic as you grew up? Yeah, but she was too busy with the children, really. I had five children, so she was always busy doing rather than drawing or always practical things, making clothes and cooking and never really doing this sort of thing. But the stuff before we were kids that she did. She was artistic then? Yeah. It was come, come back. How nice. <laughs> I wonder what will come back to us when we... I'm just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we're allowed the same sort of space. Perhaps we'll be lucky and it'll be drinking and partying <laughs> within that 20. <laughs> <laughs> The workshops have been great. They've been really mixed and lively. Um, I hadn't known what to expect, but people have really embraced it and taken it to, that they've made something of it themselves, kind of keen for it to have them to have some kind of ownership and for it to follow their own strengths and abilities as well as learning something new so that they bring as much to the workshops as we do. It's been really, really important for me and really interesting to see that take its own form um, and get to know some of the people that have been coming along. Well, it's a something or other. We've got a head, a body, and bananas for arms. <laughs> so anyway, that, that's all I've done. Another day I'll do something else. You do a little bit and then sit back. There's conversation going on, that's all. So I stop when the conversation starts. Anyway, that's quite fun. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Um, it's quite fun. Oh, I enjoy it. What did you do today? Um, painting and drawing. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 Are you used to drawing? Is that something that you've done before? Yeah. Mm. I've done a little bit in yeah. recent years, but... He's been very good at it. He won't. He's modest, but he is, he's quite good at it. Yeah. 
1945. Paris, is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Ever been to Paris? Yes, we yes, have. We have. Yeah, I get confused because we've been so many places. I don't know where I've been. <laughs> we've been all over the continent, really. <laughs> I've forgotten that, you see. I forget things yeah. so easily. Well, that's, I remember, remember that now. Good thing about having objects as well, they sort of remind us of, of, yeah. of things. It's, it's been great involving the participants that we have done from um, older people in the community with younger people from Bexhall Art College and bringing them together in discussions and also bringing these um, extraordinary varied objects and things are discovered within the museum's uh, collections, stored collections. Bringing those out, understanding um, sometimes the story or the um, design features of those objects, discussing those in a group, and, and setting little tasks for the participants to sort of explore and respond to these objects. And it's been um, extraordinary and, and great fun to sort of watch that, that happening. I've been loving every week of doing this. It's all related to the feeling and theme of how it was originally, you know, like, and it's on the idea of how all those objects in the museum, they've all, they've all had some sort of original, what's the word, some original usage out of what it was originally made for, like whether or not if it was a dress or some sort of object or weapon was used or something like that, it's, and now they're displayed in here, as it's original, it's more realistic, that's what makes it so fascinating. It's the same thing when I first discovered those tin helmets and it makes you wonder whether or not if they survived the war or not. Can I have another mm. look then? And it's given me a chance to see the, how the museum actually works. It's been, it's been really interesting to think about objects in a different way. What do we have here? Uh, a glass sponge. That's special, isn't it? Glass sponges have a sophisticated silica or glass skeleton. The fanciest are these. Common name is Venus's flower basket. So you have to you have to sort of imagine an animal on the seabed attached down at one end. So it would have had a sort of soft squidgy outside as well as a bit like a sort of cucumber. So it's essentially got a fiberglass skeleton. So if you just imagine it's like a giant gherkin on the seabed, that's sort of what you're dealing with. Do you still find them? Yeah, they're still down there. That it's about the, the sense of place as well as the, the welcome and the work that someone might do in there, but having that particular environment can have a really positive impact on someone's well-being um, in addition to the work that they might do and what they might see or hear there. I think how lucky we are to be able to see these things that have been around for so long and they've been handled by so many people. Oh, you wonder who thought about it and who discovered it in the first place. I mean, yeah. how do you discover something like that? Gosh, look at the work in the making, yeah. in the making of it. But it's so nice coming up, everyone's so friendly and it's good for us. Isn't it? Oh, it's lovely, I do love coming, really, really do.